Do you have a strong opinion about barns? Well, if you're like most of the wild community, you're definitely not alone. In today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about my own opinions about barns, so stay tuned. Watch this! Hey everyone, it's Raffle, and today I'm going to be talking about barns. This is a card that's discussed frequently in Wild Hearthstone, and is especially relevant now because of the recent waves of nerfs. Seems like every time we get balance changes, everyone is anticipating and expecting some sort of change to Barnes and always disappointed when it doesn't happen. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think Barnes is a problematic card, as well as some of the changes I would like to see to make Wild a healthier format moving forward. Before we get into my opinion though, if you're a fan of Wild Hearthstone, I post daily highlights from the format on this channel, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to get notifications of when I post those. First up, what's the problem with Barnes? If you look at meta reports, the most common deck that runs Barnes is Big Priest, which is occasionally knocking on the door of Tier 1, but never really crosses that threshold at least consistently. Now obviously the frustrations of losing to Barnes apply to more than just Big Priest, but because that's the most popular deck that utilizes this card, most of the arguments are going to be taken from that perspective. So if the strongest deck that utilizes Barnes isn't even that powerful, what's all the fuss about? Well the primary problem with Barnes is that he elicits an emotional response from the opposing player unlike any other card in Hearthstone. There's nothing worse in the game than getting hit by Barnes on 4 into Yashira, into Yashira, into Concede. It feels helpless, you don't really have a whole lot of removal options for that, and even if you deal with that first board state against Big Priest, you've got wave after wave of those minions coming back after you. Even in other decks, the looming high roll potential of a card like Barnes is really just dissatisfying to play against. In the past, Blizzard has shown that they are willing to nerf a card simply because of this emotional response. We saw that with cards like Naga Sea Witch, with the Starliner Druid that was plaguing Wild for a time, and even in Standard with multiple waves of nerfs to Caverns Below. So why not Barnes? The devs have indicated that this is a card that they're often looking at. So what's the hesitation? Why haven't they pulled the trigger and given it the Naga Sea Witch treatment? Well, you have to look on the other side of the coin as well. I've already mentioned that Big Priest isn't the most powerful deck in the Wild format, yet it has an incredibly high play rate relative to its power. This indicates that there are some players that just like the deck, and Barnes is a big part of that. So the dev team has to weigh the consequences of appeasing the cries for nerfs against the dissatisfaction of those players that actually enjoy playing Big Priest. And their opinion about the game matters too. Me personally? Having played Big Priest a fair amount myself, I would say that the benefits of removing what I consider to be an unhealthy card like Barnes outweigh the negative consequences of weakening the deck as a whole. Even with a change to Barnes, or without him entirely, Big Priest will remain a deck in Wild Hearthstone. The difference is that while it will still be fun for the deck pilots, who get to summon large minions and bring them back to life with the numerous resurrect effects in, at their disposal, it won't leave such a bad taste in players' mouths that lose to it simply because they drew one card out of 30 by turn 4. Now obviously Barnes elicits a strong negative emotional response from players that lose to it, but what about looking at things from a purely practical standpoint? I already mentioned that Big Priest isn't the best deck in the format, far from it even. But there's still an argument against Barnes existing as he currently does that takes emotion completely out of it. If you look at the mulligan and drawn win rates for a card like Barnes in Big Priest and other decks that look to abuse him, it's absurd. No single card should increase a deck's win rate as much as Barnes does, especially when you only have a single copy of it in your deck. If you look at the stats for Big Priest, the win rate of the deck jumps significantly to an absurd nearly 80% level when you have Barnes in your mulligan, or even if you just draw him in the early turns. This not only creates too high a proportion of non-games, but it also makes opposing players distill a deck like Big Priest down to just simply draw Barnes, win the game. In reality, there's at least a little bit more to it than that. But regardless, no card should have this strong an impact on a deck's win rate. 
So because of the emotional response to Barnes, as well as the ridiculous jump in win rates simply for drawing the card, I think something needs to change about Barnes. But what? The most common suggestion is something involving a 1-1 actor token that mimics or takes on the effect of a minion in your deck. While this design is maybe a little bit more interesting than just increasing the mana cost, I think it fails to address problems outside of Big Priest. If this were the case, we'd still have Spell Hunter running Barnes and Yashira, we'd still have Big Rogue running Barnes to high roll in other ways, so it only solves one aspect of the Barnes problem, which admittedly is the biggest aspect of it in Big Priest, but diluting the res pool doesn't impact other decks that look to abuse Barnes. For me personally, I don't think that the problem with Barnes is just Big Priest, it's actually the speed at which it creates a massive swing turn. So Barnes coming out on turn 4, pulling a Yashira into Yashira, even outside of Big Priest, is just a mistake. To correct that, the simplest solution is to just increase its mana cost by 1. Coming out a turn later allows aggro decks to more effectively punish these decks that often aren't doing anything in the early turns. Not only that, it gives slower controlling decks a chance to actually respond to this board state rather than just losing the game because big minions are on the board by turn 4. Now I know this seems a little bit lazy, but it is in line with some of the changes that the developers have made in the past, and there are some benefits to making simple changes to cards, such as increasing the mana cost. Now another way you could slow this card down is to make the effect a death rattle rather than a battle cry, so the opponent can just ignore the barns or take some time to answer it when they actually have an answer to the big minion that might come out of it. So if you give Barnes the same effect but attached to a death rattle, it dies, it pulls a 1-1 token, potentially Yashira and do a big swing turn, but again the opponent can interact with that, there's a decision that's being made. Do I kill the Barnes now? Do I wait for my opponent to kill it and then answer the minions that come out of it? Or do I just let it sit? You even have the opportunity to silence it in that case to negate the effect entirely. Simply changing Barnes to a death rattle does present some problems in Big Priest though, because this becomes a minion that you're happy to resurrect, and you're not too upset about getting it off of Shadow Essence. So because of that I think we still need to bump up the mana cost, and probably bump it up even further to 6 mana, so that it resembles Shadow Essence a little bit more closely, and generally comes out a little bit later, although with a stronger effect. Essentially this allows Big Priest to run 3 copies of Shadow Essence, they're still going to get overrun in the early game, but they have a stronger late game, which I think there's some value in that for the deck. Honestly, while I personally am leaning towards the death rattle effect at 6 mana, I think the most likely change is probably to bump it up to 5, we could see it go even further to a 6 mana battle cry, and I think that would be perfectly fine too. As long as the effect is happening later in the game, I don't feel like it does as much damage to the format. Before wrapping up though, I wanted to give some final thoughts about the Barnes problem. Barnes is obviously one of the more prominent problematic cards in Wild Hearthstone, but he's not the only one. So I'd encourage you not to fixate on a single card. I've mentioned in the past some examples of cards that I think are problematic, including Voidcaller, Baku, Gen, and even Thing from Below. And if we're not careful, when we fixate on a single card like many do with Barnes, if there ever is a change to that card, it's just going to expose the problems that these other cards present even more. And as a result of that, players will st soon bandwagon on to the next card, and the next card, and the next card, and never really being satisfied with the game. If you think about it, Wild is actually in a pretty healthy place right now. Sure, Baku and Gen decks are dominating the Wild meta reports, but we do have a fairly diverse meta that we should take some time to appreciate. Yes, it's frustrating to lose the game as early as turn 4 from either Barnes or Voidcaller, but in general, the fact that we have access to decks for all 9 classes is fantastic when you compare it to something like the most recent standard meta reports where a single class just absolutely dominated. Finally, we need to be very deliberate about how we express ourselves and communicate with the Hearthstone dev team when we have a problem with something. Too often, whether in direct conversation or discussions with friends, we just sort of default as a community to calling the devs lazy or dumb or greedy for some reason because they won't change a card. You have to remember that these are people. They make decisions, 
that they think will be best for the game. Sometimes they make decisions that we disagree with. It's okay to tell them that. It's not okay to call them stupid. It's not okay to call them lazy when their goal is to make the best game for the largest audience. Their goal is to make the best game for the largest audience. That's not always going to meet your expectations, your needs, your desires. Keeping that in mind is important. And while Barnes himself elicits an emotional response, you don't need to be emotional in expressing that and communicating it with the developers. Instead, take a step back, give yourself some time to process why it is that you dislike something and express it clearly, concisely, and with support for that argument. In doing so, you're going to strengthen the player-developer relationship rather than alienate the developers to the point where not only are they not interacting with us as a community, but as a result, they're not really able to listen because of all the noise involved in personal attacks. So take time. If you're going to give criticism, do it right. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you have an opinion about Barnes, make sure and leave it in the comments below. Just be sure to keep it civil. If you'd like to take a deeper dive into this discussion about Barnes, feel free to join the Discord. There are plenty of other Hearthstone players that have opinions about this, as well as many other things. There's a link in the description, along with my other social media accounts. So check them out. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.